your career kind of spans across selling cookies to cloud to connectivity to cybersecurity leadership right now. I was a nerd. I love technology. I had no idea I was going to become a CISO in cybersecurity. For somebody who would think that, hey, is it too late for me to be in cybersecurity? What would you tell them? Not only is it not too late, it's the perfect time. Earlier, women were not as confident in the tech space. Yeah. So what is shifting? Women need community. So your network or your community is why it's shifted for women. Let's say there's a 16-year-old girl who wants to break into tech. Where would that girl start? First thing first, if you are a 16-year-old girl, a 26-year-old girl, a 36-year-old woman, you belong in this industry. What do you think is the future of cybersecurity leadership? Hey, everyone. Welcome back to 10 Minutes with CISOs. I am Preston Chalar, recording this one from Huntington Beach at the Women of the Channel Leadership Summit. I flew down from SF for a coffee chat just because today's guest is someone special, someone who's redefining what cybersecurity leadership looks like. Jen Waltz is a force. She's the Chief Channel Cybersecurity Officer here. A 2025 CRN Women of the Channel honoree was also named 2024 Women of the Year role model. With all of these achievements, her journey has never been linear. It was always bold, diverse, and deeply human. If you have ever wondered, do I belong in cybersecurity? Well, this episode is for you. I know your career kind of spans across selling cookies to cloud, to connectivity, to cybersecurity leadership right now. Yes. If we take or rewind this a little bit, right, mm -hmm. um, how would you describe your journey in terms of not following someone else's path mm -hmm. and creating one of your own? Every opportunity that's happened to me then because I've taken initiative. I've asked. And so when I think about my career selling Girl Scout cookies, that's when I knew that I wanted to give people exactly what they wanted. Just seeing as a child someone's the joy on someone's face when they got their cookies that they had ordered, it showed me that even in that small context, giving people what they want will make them happy and that will bring you joy. I was a nerd. I loved technology. I had no idea I was going to become a CISO in cybersecurity. That was not my plan at all. My plan was just to figure out and use the gifts that I had to help other people but along the way learn. So when I think about how, as a kid, selling cookies, then the power of my network, which is how I started my career at Microsoft, an account that I had sold the, the chief information officer had gotten hired by Microsoft. And he had said to a, Microsoft's HR, if this woman is interested, we need to hire her. Three weeks later, I was a Microsoft employee. And that set off how I understood about computing. I give, I'm still connected to the people that hired me into Microsoft, the person who gave me my first opportunity. And I feel blessed that because I took initiative and I raised my hand and I wasn't always looking for glory for myself, I just wanted to learn and help the business. Everything in my career has, has come from that. And then uh, how did that translate to cybersecurity? Security is the underpinning of everything. And so is network. So there are two meanings for network. Network is, you know, all of the connectors and the routers and the switches, because if you understand network, you're going to have a great career in cybersecurity, mm -hmm. but also network in the sense of who you know. So after I decided that I needed some consulting experience, I went to Unisys and I used my knowledge of working with partners to sell some of the biggest deals in financial services. And my manager at the time said, you know what? We're not selling like you. We're not providing things. We want you to go and build this out. We, we think we know how to work with partners, but we're, clearly we're not doing it the way that you're doing it. So that started my career in cybersecurity. You come traditionally from channel and a sales background, right? And hospitality, I would say. So 
for somebody who's already in, let's say, sales, channel, hospitality, those kind of things, and they think that, hey, is it too late for me to be in cybersecurity? Yeah. Or is it too late for me to lead in cybersecurity? Mm -hmm. What would you tell them? What would be your advice to them? Not only is it not too late, it's the perfect time. Anyone, if you, again, do the work, understand networking, what I mean is topology, how networks interact with other networks, that is the biggest thing you can do to advance your career. And it's something you touch every day. So I would say cybersecurity, it thrives on the perspectives of sales, marketing, hospitality, customer success, operations, engineering, provisioning, billing, all of these things are th threaded. And so when your backgrounds teach you how to um, read people, tell a story because people can read that. They know if you've been in a situation in which the shit hit the fan, right? That's a good thing because then you thought of things to get out of that situation. So problem solving. The other thing I would say is, oh, not only problem solving, but problem solving under pressure. That is how you learn. You've seen the industry evolve from over the years, yeah. from infrastructure to AI, um, from perimeter security to what agent sprawl is right now yeah. and beyond. And like from your point of view, yeah. what do you think is has is the role of women shift? Like, how do you think the role of women has shifted over the years during this time? So when I think about being a woman in tech, I would say I have gotten every step up in my career. Every advancement in my career has come from a white male who saw something in me that I was smart. I was willing to do the work. I was willing to get my hands dirty. Not only that, I was willing to work with other teams to help them be successful and help them realize how they played a role in taking something new to market solving a customer problem. And to me, women in leadership, that's what we do. We are bridge builders. You know, we're the, hey, let me go get their connected tissue. I want to work with everything. And that is amazing and gold, the gold standard, because we're expecting women to lead. And women leaders work cross-functionally. Women leaders admit when we've made mistakes. Women leaders advance other people. And so I would like to say, as a female leader, especially a woman of color, people know that I can work with anyone, even people that don't look like me, I still respect and want to learn. I hope that answers your yeah, question. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think um, it's still sort of the same? Because earlier, women were not as confident, like for like a few years back. Yes. And now they're a bit more yeah. coming in in the tech space. Mm -hmm. And there's a bit more specifically also in cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. So what is shifting? Women need community. Remember I talked about the dual duality of network, right? Knowing the topology, but also knowing people. So your network or your community is why it's shifted for women. Because people talk and your network is going to place you in opportunities, right? And so because of that network or community, we are no longer asking for a seat. We're building our own table to the side. And that, because, because women are building a table, we are redefining leadership. Let's say to the 16-year-old gold, Mm -hmm. watching this episode right now yes. uh, who wants to break into tech mm -hmm. but is really not sure where to start and all the buzzwords these days that we are hearing about AI and this augmentation of force to multiply force or increase productivity or even replace people at some level mm -hmm. uh, with agent tech and AI and all those things, right? Where would that girl start? And more importantly, what should she believe in herself at oh. this point in time? First thing first, if you are a 16-year-old girl, a 26-year-old girl, 
a 36-year-old woman, a 46-year-old woman, you belong in this industry. I want you to know that because your problem-solving skills are going to get you there. Um, I would say don't wait to be chosen. Choose yourself. Invest in yourself. Create your network. Like I mentioned, duality of network. The bigger you make your community, the more you're going to be chosen for opportunities. More than anything, I want young women to believe this. Technology does not need perfect people. It needs people who have problem-solving skills, deep emotional intelligence that are curious and courageous and always ask questions. That if you can do those things, you will have a career in technology for the rest of your life. What do you think is the future of cybersecurity leadership? You have to embrace change. And change is going to happen more frequently, more often than ever before because of AI, because of quantum computing, because things are being solved. You've got AI now actually passing very hard employment tests, right? To, to do code and development. So think about that. And so I think you have to be, you have to embrace change. You also have to have innate, unwavering, thirsty curiosity. There is no other word. You have to be thirsty about being curious, right? <laughs> You've got I like this. I'll, I'll let that freeze, by the way. <laughs> got to be thirsty about being curious. <laughs> so... <laughs> 